Hello, and welcome back to The Organ in the Church. Now, I was going to do a piano video for our last video, and uh, I did do a piano video, and then I, when I was sort of editing it, I listened to it and thought, no, that sounds terrible, we're not going to do that. Let's go back to the church and do it properly. So I'm going to introduce you today to the world of the French toccata. It's much easier to say that in English, by the way. If you watch the German version of this video, I made a complete mess of that sentence. So I'm introducing you to the world of the French toccata. And everybody knows Vidor's toccata. Everybody knows that piece of music. And I think probably most people know the final movement of Vienne's first symphony, which is kind of a toccata. I think everybody pretty much knows that as well. So those are sort of some of the more famous French pieces that might be considered toccatas. There are, of course, a lot more. And I'm going to introduce you to one of the first, one of the earliest, and it's the legendary G major toccata by Theodore Dubois, or Theodore Dubois, to give him his proper pronunciation. And it's a very sort of bright, lovely sounding toccata in three sections, well, it's three sections plus coda. And, um, I think it's the perfect starting point if you want to learn one of the French toccatas. Now, why do I think that? Well, I'm going to combine this with a personal uh, request I received from someone recently. Remember, in the last video, we talked about um, Patreon and Steady memberships, and also YouTube memberships now that we can offer, um, to sort of assist us here at the channel. And we had various levels. We had sort of early access to new videos. We had extra videos of music pieces. We had uh, a live stream just for members only with me. I'm going to be doing one of those next week, the first one. So if you want to get involved there, check it out. And also, for sort of uh, for more individual kind of stuff, uh, private online lessons, monthly online lessons, uh, and the idea is, the idea is that we, you know we would work together on pieces of music. And one guy has written to me and said, I'd like to start with that, but I've always wanted, I'm a, um, I've always wanted to learn one of these French toccatas. Where should I start? And he says, I don't know him yet, but he says he's a very good piano player, but he hasn't played the organ yet. So obviously the coordination with the pedals would be quite difficult at the beginning, but he wants to start with something fairly substantial. So I've suggested he tries the Dubois Toccata, which is very, very, um, very much hard work for the fingers, but hardly any work for the feet. So I think it's a perfect starting place. So I'm going to look at the Dubois Toccata today and show you how it works. I'm going to learn it myself before I start teaching it to someone else. And then later in the video, so please stay tuned, I'm going to introduce you to a second, much later French Toccata, which I think is also quite... I'm not going to say easy to play, but certainly um, coordination between hands and feet, rather effective, shall we say, for the beginning or for the early learning organist. Still very difficult, but it's, it's easier than the, uh, than the Vidor or the Vienne or all of those sorts of things. So uh, that's the plan for today. But before we get into the meat of it, I want to show you something else rather exciting. So don't forget, down below you will find links to Patreon and Steady and somewhere around about here there will be the sort of um, membership button. I don't know what it's called in English. I know what it's called in German because I live in Germany and I only see YouTube in German. But it'll be something like become a member or join or something like that. So click that button there if you want to join on YouTube. So while you're clicking around, check out my website, fraserganchor.com, link down there. Um, there are some new blog entries. There's a new blog entry talking about French toccatas. There is a new blog entry talking about our Patreon and Steady and why we're doing all that sort of thing and the online tuition. So that's there as well for you to check out. And we have a new addition. Now, you already know the CD, Piping Hot at the Organ. I've mentioned this many times before. CD of jazzy stuff at the organ, recorded here in Hirschbach and on the four manual wonderful instrument in Gackenbach. Um, and that's still selling on the shop. You can still have our summer offer. Details of that down there as well. Still get it with a discount for the summer offer. But now I am finally able to offer ta -da, the actual arrangements, the compositions, oops, compositions that are involved in the recording as well. And this has taken a long, long time to do. Basically, I've been trying to find online printers and uh, publishers to get this done for me. Um, theoretically to save time and cost, but it's actually been a very time-intensive and costly procedure getting this done so far. So I'll probably have to work out another way of doing this. Now, 
When I offered the CD, before I even recorded it, we did a crowdfunding thing, remember? And a lot of people ordered, pre-ordered their copy of the CD or a signed copy. And some people ordered the CD in connection with one piece of music and some people ordered it in connection with everything, all the arrangements. And I painstakingly transcribed all my recordings um, to get them down on paper. And most of those packages have now been sent around the world. Now we've had Corona for months now here and Basically everybody, I think, has received their package by now, except one or two people in the United States. Um, there are still problems sending things from Europe to the United States. Now it is gradually, gradually relaxing. I can now send things to Canada. So, Gordon McLeod, if you're watching, your package is winging its way towards you and I'll be sending you a tracking number so you can keep an eye on it. I want to make sure that this time it gets to you. Now I sent out packages months ago and it would appear that only two or three of them arrived at their destinations. So if you still haven't received yours, please let me know immediately so that I can get on top of it, yeah? Now, like I say, most of people will have by now received their copies of the book involved with the CD, but it now means that I can offer them for sale for you. So if you want to order some of the music that's involved on the CD, then you are more than welcome to. For example, my Prelude in D, there's a link to the video that, uh, that shows this wonderful piece. This was recorded in Gackenbach. It's a sort of an improvisationary thing that I did based around a modern German hymn tune, but I sort of turned it into a, an Anglican cathedral-style improvisation with uh, starting, starting very gently, building up to a huge crescendo to Tutti and then back down again. I, I, I thought it was a rather nice improvisation, and a lot of people have been asking, when can I finally buy the music for it? Well, here it is on 12 pages of magnificently printed, uh, professionally printed paper. I think it's rather nice. It looks like my sort of professional Bach music. It's got this, the blue cover and then this sort of this cream paper here, which doesn't reflect light quite so much. So it's very professionally done. And uh, yeah, over 12 pages, you have your copy of the Prelude in D, should you so wish, or any of the other ones. So there's my snowy morning blues, glory, glory, hallelujah. That's there as well. There's my boogie woogie. And so on and so on. So apart from that. Now, down there, frasergartrow.com slash shop, you will find links now to our uh, printed music. And uh, yeah, I wish you a lot of fun learning these pieces yourselves. Let's get back to learning a toccata or two. Right then, let's get into the meat of our Theodore Dubois Dubois toccata. Theodore, Theodore Dubois toccata. Bah, try saying that on a Sunday afternoon. Right. I've already done the German version of the scene, so this is a sort of a bit of a cheat now. I've got to pretend I don't know it anymore. But I decided to start out with the left hand. Now, there's not much, look at the pedals. Pedals do, on the first page, two notes. And that's it. Then nothing else until the middle of the second page. So, easy peasy. And then it's all about hands. Now, the left hand has only got eighth notes all the way through. So that's easy, let's look at that first. I'm gonna put that in the middle so I can see it. and so on and so on. Now, it says, it doesn't say staccato, it says non legato. And that's dangerous on an organ, yeah? Now, some people will play a really sort of flamboyant Liberace or Virgil Fox style staccato. And obviously the notes don't sound when you do that, certainly not on this organ, yeah? So when I'm learning a piece of music, my old organ teacher is gonna laugh himself silly when he hears me, when he hears me say this, but, control, okay? So I'm not gonna bounce about when I'm playing. I'm gonna control. Okay, so I'm controlling my hand movements, keeping everything nice and tight, okay? I didn't used to do that when I was younger, but I think that's the thing young organists don't really like control. They tend to be more flamboyant. And as we get older, middle-aged, we calm down a bit. Now. That's the left hand and it basically repeats itself and, and modulates to a different key in the middle. But apart from that, that's the left hand. Now the right hand has pretty much the same movement but in a 16th note pattern. So if you come and have a look, you see the left hand doing its thing. And the right hand, if you ignore the notes at the bottom, just look at the top notes. It's basically the same movement. I'll play that together. That 
that's basically what this piece does, okay? But to make it more interesting, he's sort of put an Alberti style thing. <laughs> Okay? To make it a bit more exciting. Now, that on its own would be quite easy until, let me get my piece of paper again, until you discover that in the middle of the first line, Mr. Dubois has put in a second line of music. He's put in a second line of music. Now, I know a lot of recordings of this piece of music. And some people play it in a very nice, stately manner, where you might be able to hear that middle line come through. Some people play it so fast, I think they do that deliberately to miss out that middle line because it's too complicated for them. Yeah, uh, it's quite difficult to find a recording where you can hear that middle line clearly. So let's make that one of our targets for this recording. <laughs> That was maybe a bit too early to put the hands together. I was fluffing about there. I was concentrating on that middle line, and my left hand forgot what it was doing. Let's do it again. Now I was concentrating on the left hand, and the upper line forgot what it was doing. Let's do it again. Maybe the right hand on its own. That's all right. Now, let's try it again, slowly, with both together. Haha. -ha. That's better. Right, so that's, what, two, three minutes of work? Three minutes of work? Four minutes of work to get to that position there. Now, I'm going to continue look at what this bit does. Now, I've already made some little markings because when I did the German version, I sort of found out that this down here was rather complicated. Let me show you the second half of the right hand. And there's page two all the way over there. So, it takes us to a new, a new place, the second half here, takes us to a new place. Um, we're modulating to B minor. And uh, to get there, we're sort of faffing around through different little, little harmonic changes. And there's a nasty turnaround in the right hand there. So let me play the second half with the hands together and see how I get on this time. <laughs> Maybe not. You heard me right at the beginning. I was fluffing about, yeah? So it's, sometimes you get too many notes in the fingers. I'm concentrating on one thing, and my fingers aren't sort of ready to do it. I haven't memorized it yet. I like to memorize pieces quite quickly. That's one of my things. But uh, this isn't going to be one of those, I don't think. <laughs> I haven't looked at the second page yet, so there was a mistake there. Right, that was better. So that means I've now got the first page kind of covered. Let me play it all together with the feet and see how we get on. It's that bar there that turns around. I need to work at that. So, apart from that, it's all there. Now, one thing I have realized is this organ, with its electro-pneumatic action, is dangerous. I'm trying to keep the speed down. Some people are going to laugh and say that's too fast already. But I'm trying to keep the speed down so that I can concentrate on what's happening. But as I'm concentrating on my fingers, by the time I've heard what the organ is doing and it's coming back to me, my fingers are sort of trying to, trying to play ahead. Does that make sense? My brain is, hasn't quite sort of coordinated the action to the sound. So yeah, that, that takes a while. 
And that's the danger of learning pieces on certain kinds of organs. If I had a direct mechanical action organ, this would not be a problem. You hear the sound exactly as you play it, which is perfect. But here I've got a slight delay and my fingers are sort of trying to work around that. Now, that's four or five or six or seven minutes probably. Just the first page of music. So obviously we're going to condense this now and move on to the middle part. I will continue practicing the first bit, which is all basically the same. It's all 16th notes and not much for the pedal, so that's fine. I'm going to do that. And now we're going to look at the middle bit. Now, the middle bit is the exact opposite. French romantic music is often about legato playing. And this is an example of ultra legato playing. It even says, you know, the composer tells you where he wants everything to be phrased. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, it's in B major, which is a pig of a key at the best of times. Uh, we've got double sharps and everything, so sight reading is not much fun, but I did the sight reading for the German version of this scene, which we just recorded, so I've kind of got it in my mind now, and I'm just going to bash through it in my English version now, but watch what my thumbs are doing, yeah? When you're playing this sort of music, there's lots of cheating to keep that legato, and it's thumb legato, so this, this piece in the middle is in four parts. We have a melody at the top, a bass line at the bottom, yeah, and then sort of two lines in the middle filling out the harmony, so it's like a chorale, yeah, so I'm just going to play it. Watch my thumbs, watch my hands, and I'm just going to play it. And once that concentration is over, it goes back to our 16th notes. And that sort of modulates around a bit. And then it's back to the beginning. There we go. Simple as that. I'm going to put all that together now. And at the end of the video, I'm going to play the Dubois Toccata. Basically, sight read it from beginning to end and see how we get on. So, like I say, I'm going to practice this now and at the end of the video play the entire piece from sight. Hmm. That's going to be part one of our French Toccata series. Part two, and this is something that I've wanted to learn for a very long time, and it's the Toccata by a slightly younger chap than Dubois called Gigou. Now, Gigou uh, was a very famous French or Parisian organist, and he was organist in... Who knows what church in Paris he was organist in? Answers in the comments below. I think most of you will know if you're interested in the organ world. His uh, toccata, like Dubois, is very finger intensive. There's not much for the feet to do. And this was my second suggestion for this young chap who wanted to learn uh, these uh, toccatas. And I personally think that the Gigou toccata is a little easier than the Dubois Toccata, and I'll show you this. I just did this for the German scene, and I just played the first eight bars of them from, from sight, and it's much easier than you think. Now the pedals come. Then it goes off and does something that I'm going to have to practice, okay? So that's part one of that toccata. And a part two of that toccata is the same melody, but this time in the pedals on its own, and the hands just play arpeggios. Easy. Um, easy. And then it goes into this magical stuff that I have to practice. 
but it's not that difficult by the looks of it, I think. And then there's a middle, then there's a third part where the melody is uh, embellished in the pedals. <laughs> Um, and the left hand only does chords. And the right hand does some amazing 16th note stuff. So it's all very, my wife just said, the wonderful world of Amelie, or whatever it's called in, in English. Uh, and it's, it's all a bit sort of Hans Zimmer interstellar, isn't it? Shall we try that? And like I say, I shall go and practice that. But that's not unplayably difficult. It sounds good, it sounds like sort of silent film music, doesn't it? Sort of the damsel strapped to the, strapped to the tracks as the train approaches. It's all that kind of sort of very rawr, wonderful stuff. So, that's going to be part two of our French Toccata series, and I'm going to go away and learn that this week and do that for our next video. The whole point of this is to show people that learning exciting sounding pieces on the organ doesn't have to be as difficult as you think. And I'm going to prove that point now by playing Dubois Toccata basically at sight. I've only been practicing it for this video today, so that's about 25 minutes or 35 minutes of filming altogether now. Uh, so yeah, bear with me. Bruises and wrong notes and all. This is my little from sight version of the Dubois Toccata for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>
Thank you.